正会。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 132. This prince help you. It was most probably that the mansion that the Kens were staying at was repaired. As it was somewhat different from the setting the Ming Chi's mansion would have. When Shen Miao entered, she had discovered that this Yan King Lane's mansion was renovated by the Ken people, as it was the same style as the Ken country's palaces and was extremely luxurious. The Ken people loved sparkling golden things, just like the previous Shen Miao. Most likely, it was because they thought that gold could highlight their wealth. That even some of the bricks in the palace were made of gold. The first time Shen Miao went to the Ken country, she was envious when she saw the palace. But the now thinking about it, the imperial family of the Ken country's love of such sparkle and gold was not flattering at all. To be such in a rush to show off one's wealth, it was really a cliche. Shen Miao finally saw Princess Ming An. After the maid who was showing the way lead them to the gardens, Princess Ming and sat at the small stone table in the garden. The stone table was decorated with silk embroidered butterflies handkerchiefs, and on top of them were plates of exquisite snacks and a pot of tea. There was a small pond next to it which still had not yet frozen due to the season, and the red carps in the pond were wagging their tails. A few maids were holding a small bowl as they sat by the side feeding the fishes. Shen Miao stood straight in front of Princess Ming and, and greeted her. Princess Ming and turned around. Among the Ming Chi, the Great Liang and the Qin Country, the Great Liang was the most powerful nation, and upon comparison. The Ming Chi and the Qin County were undoubtedly much inferior. If comparison was made between the Ming Chi and the Qin Country, then the Qin Country was much better than the Ming Chi because the Qin's troops were much stronger. Perhaps it was the Ming Chi's imperial family, the Fu family, who overly wanted to consolidate the military power in their Fu family and dare not decentralize it. After so many years, there was no outstanding generals. For example, Shen Xin and Zi Ding. When both of them were not as good as the past, the Ming Chi was unable to find anyone from families with military lineage to replace their positions. Thus, in this tribute banquet, Emperor Wen Hua called back Shen Xin in a hurry, lest he lose face in front of the other countries. Perhaps the Qin country also knew that they were inferior to the Great Liang, but was well above the Ming Chi. As when the Qin country's people were in front of the Ming Chi's people, they would have a sense of superiority. This was an annoying feeling. So when Shen Miao went over to the Qin country in her past life, all the lowly-ranked maids in the Qin palace would look down on her, much less the Qin country's imperial family, which did more unspeakable things. Since she was living in the foot of others, they trampled the Ming Chi's dignity under their feet. Seeing Princess Ming and at this moment. All the memories of the previous lifetimes surfaced up. Today, Ben Gong invited you over, but originally one thought that you would not dare to come. One did not think that you would actually come over. You do have guts. Princess Ming and glanced at Shen Miao, and her gaze became dark and gloomy. She was wearing a golden silk flower gauze robes today, and her hairstyle was the best looking on in the Qin country. But upon seeing Shen Miao's lilac cloak and light makeup. It proved to be inferior by comparison. In fact, Princess Ming and was very delicate and beautiful, and even among the females in the imperial family of the Qin country, there was a special exquisiteness about her. But there were many different things of personality traits. Shen Miao's appearance was graceful and gentle, but her traits were her pair of attractive eyes. The dignified look made her seem that there was no weak or feeble air. As if she was a high-ranking female in the palace for many years, that there was an air of nobility throughout her body. Princess is joking. Shen Miao's expression did not change. The princess is the Ming Chi's guest, so since Shen Miao had the fortune to meet, why would one not keep to the appointment? Jing and Gu Yu stood behind Shen Miao. Mo King was obstructed by the guards at the door, and Shen Miao did not say anything. As for Princess Ming An's temperament. Shen Miao knew of it crystal clear. Today, since Princess Ming An sent the invitation, it would be impossible for her to do anything truly dangerous. It would be nothing more than using some means to make things difficult for her. So when Shen Miao came over, she was already prepared. 
and the suffering she endured would not be taken for granted. She will definitely return ten times of what Princess Ming and do today. This mouth of your is really very nimble. Ben Gong of course know that you are very brace, else during the tribute banquet you will not have deliberately humiliate Ben Gong. Thinking about the events during the tribute banquet, a hint of killing intent flashed on to Princess Mingan's eyes. One need to know that she was the most pampered princess of the Ken country that even in the imperial family, everyone would be afraid of her. One did not know that after coming to the Ming Chi, which was inferior to the Ken country in everything, she was frightened so much by Shen Miao during the tribute banquet that she fainted. Thinking about the fact that she had no longer any face, Princess Ming and could not wait to kill the person in front. If there was no consideration that this was the Ming Chi's land and was also warned by Huang Fu Hao, Princess Ming and would now take Shen Miao's life. She suddenly looked at Shen Miao and laughed. Ben Gong see that you have outstanding archery abilities and find that there is no such sister like you in the Ken Palace. Why not one make a request to your emperor to let you follow Ben Gong back to the Ken country? Shin Miao almost laughed. In the past and present lifetime, this Princess Ming and seemed to still be disagreeable with her, and with these kind of words it was like she had returned to the past lifetime when she was willing to go to the Ken country as a hostage. Princess Ming and also said this to Fu Zayu Yi. She said, Your Majesty can be rest assured that since it is the Empress of the Ming Chi, the Qin country would naturally treat her very well, after all she is Ben Gong's good sister. At the end when in the Qin country, all the humiliation she suffered was not lesser than when one was in the Ming Chi. When Shen Miao returned to the Ming Chi and fought for so long with Mai Furen in the inner palace, Many things were all thanks to the five years in the Ken country in which she learned to endure silently and live in dormancy. If your highness have such intentions then do inform his majesty. Shin Miao smiled without a care, if his majesty agree to it, this official's daughter will head to the Ken country with your highness. Princess Mingan wanted to ridicule and pressure Shen Miao but she did not think that Shen Miao would answer back sarcastically. Shen Miao was Shen Xin's precious daughter so in order for Emperor Wen Hua to keep Shen Xin, he would not touch Shen Miao for the moment. She glared angrily at Shen Miao. You, Shen Miao smiled gently as she looked at her without speaking a single word. Do not worry. It would be too wrong for you to just return like this. Princess Ming and Coldlay smiled and her eyes became vicious. Why not you enter my crown prince older brother's residence and be a concubine or secondary consort? One believe that the emperor of the Ming Chi will be very willing. Shen Miao's brows slightly wrinkled. If the Ming Chi want to have good relationship with the Qin country, an alliance marriage was indeed good. If Princess Ming and really could persuade Huang Fu Hao and he proposed to marry Shen Miao as a secondary consort, Emperor Wen Hua would agree to it. And to the entire country, even if Shen Xin disagree, there would not be any way to contend against it. Seeing Shen Miao slightly lost in thoughts, Princess Ming and's lips turned into a sneer and suddenly glanced to the maid beside Shen Miao. That maid suddenly put her hands out and pushed Shen Miao into the pond. This push was sudden and fierce, so Shen Miao was caught off guard and she fell into the pond. Jing's and Gu Yu shouted and when they wanted to come over to help, it was too late. Shen Miao could feel the cold air that was splashed onto her clothes but her lips were already ice cold. Princess Ming and's methods were all like this. Since today she could not truly hurt her, then she would let Shen Miao suffer some difficulties. Even this kind of results were almost expected by Shen Miao. Shen Miao landed in the water in a putong but she knew how to tread water, so even though the water at the beginning of winter is cold, it did not render her immovable. However one heard another putong sound shortly. At first she thought that she heard wrongly but when she turned around, she saw that there was splashing behind her, and that gold color was none other than Princess Mingan. Princess Mingan's shrieks almost pierced one's eardrums and it seemed that she did not know how to float. She could only shriek, someone come, someone come. Princess Mingan's servants also became frenetic after seeing this sight and quickly went to look for a bamboo to save her. The guards knew how to tread water but they were all males and Princess Ming and was a blue-blooded nobility. One fear that if one were to touch her, 
on the second day their heads would roll, thus no one went up to rescue. Moreover the location where Princess Ming and fell into, was truly too far away. Shin Miao was also pushed into the pond but as she fell by the side of the pond, her location was not far from the edge of the pond. But Princess Ming and actually fell into the middle of the pond, where even bamboo poles could not reach at all. When Shen Miao saw this amusing scene, she felt that it was somewhat funny. But it was not the time to watch the show from the water. So when everyone was flustered, she leisurely swam towards the shore of the pond. When she reached the edge of the pond, Jing's and Gu Yi were filled with panic as they pulled her up. Just halfway during their actions, one could hear a shout, what is going on? One could only see two males walking from outside the gardens. One male was clad in gold robes and jade headgear, with a gloomy expression that destroyed a third of his handsome appearance. The other person was clad in a gold purple robe with a black coat and half a sliver mask covering his face. It did not change his handsome and heroic appearance as he unhurriedly followed Huang Fu Hao's steps and headed over, replying your highness, the princess has fallen into the water. Those servants quickly reported. Seeing the servants running around in disorder, Huang Fu Hao took a deep breath before looking over to see Prince Ru Ai's expression. But Prince Ru Ai was wearing a mask and the lips under the mask were slightly hooked up, but no one could see clearly what was he thinking at the moment. Huang Fu Hao then shouted at the guard behind. Still do not go quickly, that guard stiffened but was also helpless and could only fly towards the pond. Most likely he had some martial arts skills, as he easily fished the soaking wet Princess Ming and to the shore. Princess Ming and had choked on quite a lot of water, and the first thing she did was scream and point at Shen Miao. This slut pushed me into the water. Crown Prince older brother kill her for me. Princess Ming and was utterly furious that she actually said such words in front of everyone. Huang Fu Hao was secretly shocked and opened his mouth to stop her, Ming and Princess Ming and was surprised for a moment, and it was only now she saw that Prince Ru Ai was actually standing by Huang Fu Hao's side. She jumped up in shock but her face was still flushed red in anger. To be such a sorry figure in front of such an elegant man of the generation, if there was a hole on the ground, Princess Ming'an would have squeezed into in. And all this was thanks to Shen Miao. Jing's was unable to hold back and counterattacked for Shen Miao. Your Highness's words do not make sense. It was obviously our young lady that fell into the water first, so how would one be able to push your Highness? Our young lady is not a god that have the capabilities of having three heads and six arms. What thing are you to be so daring as to talk like that to Ben Gong? Princess Ming and was not angry but laughed instead. You meant that Ben Gong is slandering Shen Miao? Someone come and catch this crazy and rave made for Ben Gong. Shen Miao smiled coldly and blocked Jing's. Your Highness is from the Qin country while Jing's is my people and this is the Ming Qi. Since when can the Qin people behave atrociously on the Ming Qi's soil? She used the two words behave atrociously and it can be said that it was so impolite, that even Huang Fu Hao could not help but gave her another look. You impudent! Princess Ming and shouted. This official's daughter does not find oneself impudent. Shen Miao's imposing manner was not the slightest weak at all. Now she was not the empress who suffered in silence in the Qin country. Moreover, if she could not even protect a maid then she would have wasted living in this lifetime. Now that Princess Ming and used her identity to behave atrociously, she did not even need to use her brains to deal with her. This was the Qin country's residence and Princess Ming and servants had long brought a cloak for Princess Ming and to drap over herself. But there was none for Shen Miao, as the lilac cloak was drenched and almost attached to her body, that even if Jing's and Gu Yu used themselves to block, it would still be unsuccessful. Huang Fu Hao stared at Shen Miao, which was somewhat presumptuous. Just at this time, one saw that Prince Ruai chuckled and suddenly took off the big black cloak that he was wearing, and lightly threw it over Shen Miao's body and it covered Shen Miao up nicely. This kind of action made the people around surprised for a moment, as this Prince Ruai of the Great Liang had always been a loner since coming to the Ding capital and did not have any relationship with the Ming Qi and also did not deliberately made any relationship with the Qin country, 
So why did he inexplicably help to pull Shen Miao out from a difficult position? Huang Fu Hao's gaze at Shen Miao became very meaningful, but Princess Ming An was so jealous that she bit her lips. Jing's and Gu Yu supported Shen Miao to stand up. Princess Ming An was unable to hold back and said, It is obviously clear that it was you who pushed Ben Gong down. If it was not you, how would Ben Gong fall into the water? Could it be that it was my servants who pushed Ben Gong? Shen Miao laughed. Even though her hair was totally wet, her calm appearance when compared to Princess Ming and who was bursting in anger, seemed much more dignified. She said, this official's daughter's servants had already explained for this official's daughter. This official's daughter fell into the water first. So how would one be able to push your highness down? Perhaps it is your highness that accidentally slipped. Princess Ming and said angrily, if it was Ben Gong who slipped, then how would one slipped and fall into the middle of the pond? Then that would be a coincidence. Shen Miao did not say it lightly, this official's daughter is not a warrior with extraordinary strength, and it is impossible for one to push the princess to such a far away location the middle of the pond. Suddenly a light laughter escaped and everyone looked over, and saw that Prince Rui's lips had hooked up. It was just that even though he was smiling, one was unable to see what expression was under the mask, which made others feel that he was somewhat unpredictable. Princess Ming and bit her teeth and looked toward Prince Rui. Since your highness is here and is not people of the Ming Chi and the Ken country, one would invite your highness to uphold justice and say if Ben Gong or Shen Miao is lying. Huang Fu Hao wanted to stop Princess Ming and but it was too late. Thus the fury in Huang Fu Hao's heart soared up to heavens. Princess Ming and was proud and arrogant but had no brains. Even though he knew that Princess Ming and's anger was directed at Shen Miao, he did not expect that Princess Ming and would use such a stupid method. If anything went wrong, Shen Miao could use the trick of injuring herself upon her return, and Princess Ming and would end up at a bad position. Moreover today Prince Rui of the Great Liang suddenly came over to visit, and saw this chaotic scene. Huang Fu Hao just simply wanted to squash Princess Ming and to death. Shen Miao dropped her eyes and Princess Ming and looked at him full of hope. There was some embarrassment on Huang Fu Hao's face as Prince Rui's lips hooked up. Why should this prince be bothered about this matter? Princess Ming and was stunned for a while, while Shen Miao rolled her eyes secretly. Your honored residence is sure lively. One was unable to hear if Prince Rui's words were of ridicule, but that light tone of voice made Huang Fu Hao unhappy. He looked at Shen Miao who was draped in Prince Rui's cloak and suddenly smiled gently. This is only a misunderstanding today. One did not expect that young Lady Shen would be involved in it. Ben Wang will apologize to young Lady Shen on behalf of one's younger sister, and hope that young Lady Shen would not be concerned about it. Crown Prince older brother. Princess Ming and did not expect Huang Fu Hao to give in to Shen Miao, and got anxious and spoke in dissatisfaction. However Huang Fu Hao glared at her coldly and she dared not say anything else and just looked at Shen Miao with jealousy and hatred in her eyes. Shen Miao looked at Huang Fu Hao and said lightly, Your Highness the Crown Prince had spoken, this official's daughter dare not disobey. This generous words were said unwillingly and reluctantly. It made Princess Ming and's heart furious again, and Huang Fu Hao who was also stunned looked at Shen Miao meaningfully. Shen Miao's eyes hung down with thousands of emotions passing through them. Huang Fu Hao on the surface looked broad-minded and polite, but in fact was the most vicious and cruel. His type of viciousness was different from Fu Ziyu Yi as even disgust could not be concealed. Previously when she was in the Qin country, there was once a time when Huang Fu Hao was drunk and wanted to dishonor her, and if it was not for Gu Yu who desperately protected her innocence, one fear that upon her return to the Ming Qi palace, what would be waiting for her was a long piece of silk, as the Ming Qi imperial family would not accept an unfaithful empress. However when that happened, Gu Yu was stabbed to death by Huang Fu Hao using the guard sword, as she had offended Huang Fu Hao. Shen Miao could never forget the moment when Huang Fu Hao stabbed and made a few holes on the already dead Gu Yu. Blood keep flowing out, but Huang Fu Hao only ordered people to throw Gu Yu's body to the heap for wolves. She could not do anything at all. She lost the closest person in the Qin country, 
and could not even bury Gu Yu at all. If one were to say Shen Miao was somewhat disgusted with Princess Ming and then towards Huang Fu Hao, she was filled with hatred. It was just that she now had no way to make Huang Fu Hao pay the price. Huang Fu Hao's gaze was suspicious and Shen Miao collected herself in a moment. It seemed that he had discovered some obvious emotions that made him feel somewhat cold. He did not understand what that was, but instinctively wanted to inquire into it. Just as he wanted to speak about it, Prince Ruai suddenly stood sideways. He was tall and the petite-sized Shen Miao was blocked by his movement that one could almost not see her at all. It was really not the time to come over today. Prince Ruai gave a glance at Huang Fu Hao and Princess Mingan. They clearly did not see his expression, but both of them felt that Prince Ruai's eyes were somewhat cold. He continued, will come back in the future. Huang Fu Hao wanted to say some words of persuasion as the current situation was still not clear. But in any case the king country did not want to be enemies with the Great Liang. If this meant that the Great Liang's Prince Ruai has intention to be closer to their Ken country, the Ken country would be glad to see it happen. One thought that today one would be able to get closer to Prince Ruai, but did not think that Princess Mingan would mess it up. He stared fiercely at Princess Mingan and helplessly said, It is Ben Wang that entertained inconsiderately. The next time your highness visits again, Ben Wang will definitely show great hospitality. Prince Ruai chuckled and no one knew what did it meant before he suddenly turned around and left, but then suddenly stopped his steps and looked at Shen Miao with a smile but not a smile, since young lady Shen is soaking wet, it is better to return to the residence early, is one willing to leave together with this prince? Shen Miao took a deep breath and a gentle smile burst forth, many thanks to your highness Prince Ruai. Huang Fu Hao and Princess Ming and looked on as the two brushed their sleeves and left. Princess Ming and almost bit her lips till they were broken. Crown Prince older brother, that slut seduced Prince Ruai and also pushed me into the water. This matter cannot just let it be. Shut up blockhead. Huang Fu Hao glanced at her coldly and warned, today Ben Wang spare you this time. If there is a repeat and things are mucked up. Ben Wang will not protect you when Imperial Father pass the blame down. He then turned around and left after brushing his sleeves. After Princess Ming and was lectured by Huang Fu Hao, she dared not say any contradictory words, and her level of hatred for Shen Miao went up by a level. Especially the back view of the two leaving together made her feel like her heart was cut up by knives. She had all the while been willful and selfish but knew of her own beauty and was blue-blooded nobility so she had never fancy any man. It was difficult to found a man that she fancied, but he seemed to look after Shen Miao. How could she tolerate it? Princess Ming and clenched her fist and said hatefully, Shen Miao, Ben Gong will definitely make you rather die than live. Outside the Ken country's residence, Shen Miao's horse carriage was still outside the doors. Seeing that Shen Miao was draped with an unfamiliar man's cloak and her hair was wet, Mo King suddenly tensed up, young lady, no harm. Shen Miao waved her hands and said, let us return to the residence first. This prince has helped Shen young lady, but Shen young lady did not say a word of thanks. This is a bit too heartless. Prince Ruai hugged his chest and spoke unhurriedly. But it was Jing's and the rest that were stunned for a moment. Shen Miao looked at him coldly. Did Prince Ruai played happily today? That would depend if you are happy or not. He smiled and even with the mask on, Shen Miao was able to guess the nasty look on this person's expression at the moment. You are responsible for Princess Mingan's fall into the water. She leaned close to Zi Jing Xing and whispered. Why did you do this? Zi Jing Xing lowered his head and looked at her. She was petite so when Zi Jing Xing wanted to whisper to her, he needed to bend down slightly. When their lines of sight were leveled, it however looked overly close and somewhat ambiguous. His voice was low and sweet with a light tease in it. What kind of thing she is considered to be to be able to also bully you? Zi Jing Xing paused and stared at Shen Miao. Aren't you my people? It is within reason to help you in this. Shen Miao unexpectedly took a step back and pulled the distance away from him before saying, Then many thanks to you. Thanks is not a matter of saying some words. Zi Jing Xing's lips hooked up. This prince need to think carefully. Shen Miao was too lazy to say more to him, 
and went up the carriage without a second word. Mo King was worried Shen Miao would catch a cold and rushed back to the Shen mansion without stopping, so their figures quickly disappeared from this lane. Seeing that the horse carriage was no longer seen at the distance, a tall and burly man appeared behind Zi Jing crossing. Zi Jing Xing's eyes turned cold, investigate if Huang Fu Hao has ever been to the Ding capital before. The man bowed before leaving. Zi Jing Xing turned around and glanced at Prince Qin's residence's doors, and the corners of his lips hooked up but his eyes gave out a cold light. On the way back to the residence, Jing's and Gu Yu dared not speak as no one thought that Shen Miao would be put in such difficulties when she went out today. This Princess Mingan's guts were truly too big as she dared to push others into the water in broad daylight. Jing's eyes were all red. At the midst of danger, she did not have any apprehension as she took not the other party's identity into consideration but the now thinking about it. That person was after all the kin country's princess and she was just a humble servant. If one were to really do anything to her, Jing's herself would have no solution at all. Now thinking about that, she then became scared. Shen Miao however was actually feeling calm. She already knew that Princess Ming and had ill intentions but due to the interest of the bigger picture, even if no one came today, Princess Ming and would also let others fish her out from the water and will not truly want her life. However one did not know that a fiend would suddenly appear who then pushed Princess Ming and into the water. This was naturally Zi Jing Xing messing around. Zi Jing Xing was lawless and did not consider anyone, and just schemed against Princess Ming and in front of Huang Fu Hao. One only fear that when Huang Fu Hao thought back about this, he would also realize that something was wrong. After all when Princess Ming and fell, she fell into the center of the pond and it would not be possible if one did not have any martial skills. Moreover other than the guards who had martial arts skills, there was only Zi Jing Xing. Even though one did not know if it was Zi Jing Xing's act, one would always be suspicious. But Shen Miao's eyes moved slightly. This action of Zi Jing Xing put Princess Ming in such a difficult position, and it indeed made one feel rejuvenated. If today there was no Zi Jing Xing, she most likely would suffer a lot but now with this situation, she still suffered but seeing Princess Ming and also suffering, one find that whatever bitterness that she tasted was worth it. Jing's and Gu Yu were actually somewhat worried as they looked at Shen Mia while Shen Mia was thinking, her lips hooked up and seemed to be somewhat happy. Both of them looked at one another and both scratched their heads. As Shen Miao was pushed down to the water by others and how would one be happy about it? Upon returning to the Shen mansion, because Shen Miao was drenched, she could only sneak in from the back doors. Jing's quickly brought a handkerchief to wipe Shen Miao's hair and helped her change into a new set of clothes, while Gu Yu went to the kitchens to instruct them to make ginger tea. After Shen Miao sat down for a while, she asked, why have one not see Bei Lu and Shuang Zhang yet? Before she left, she had instructed Bei Lu and Shuang Zhang to stay in the residence waiting for news, but there was not a single one of them around at present. Just as she was speaking, one saw Bei Lu returning from outside and said in surprised joy when she saw Shen Miao. Young lady finally returned. Just now Furin asked this servant where did young lady went? And why was young lady not back yet? What is the matter with mother? Once Shen Miao managed to dry her hair, she asked. Heard that the daughter of the old general's benefactor came to the house. Furan is currently outside chatting with that young lady, and wanted young lady to go over to take a look. Shen Miao's hand that was holding the handkerchief paused and her gaze became sharper. What is that person's name? Bei Lu was surprised as she found Shen Miao's gaze was somewhat cold and subconsciously replied, here that she has the surname of Chang. 